Palm Sunday. Uh, yesterday was a glorious day, and now today we're back in Siberia. So, welcome to spring in Indiana. Um, today, uh, we're in addition to being thankful that you're here, we're also thankful uh, that two other folks are here. One is our uh, person who's going to be singing for us, Will Borland. Uh, he is a wonderful young man, very talented, uh, and he and his uh, two siblings have been attending Wabash Avenue, and uh, so we're thankful he is here today. We're also thankful that uh, our preacher here today, you're going to hear a good sermon for a change, the Reverend Kelly Spencer is here. She is a Lake Fellow in Parish Ministry at Second Presbyterian Church, and uh, so we are thankful that Pastor Kelly is with us. Uh, announcements. So next Sunday is Easter. And session will, on Tuesday evening, be making a decision of, about whether we'll be in person or uh, still uh, doing a worship remotely. So we will get that word out to you. And also an invitation from the deacons that uh, if and as you are blessed and would like to contribute to the one great hour of sharing, that will be received on Easter. You can send in your check or... Uh, or drop it by, uh, and this is an offering to help those who are hurting, so thank you for sharing. And maybe an announcement also from Christian Education, if you want to order for delivery some Easter candies to a loved one, uh, you can do that via the C's Candy link. 10% of your uh, purchase will go to uh, our two Compassion International kids, Magertu uh, Silche in Ethiopia and Miguel Suarez in uh, Mexico. Uh, that uh, helps with their nutrition, their medical care, their education, and their religious instruction. So it's a gift that's doubly sweet. So the Christian Education Committee thanks you uh, for, uh, for blessing them. We are blessed that you were here. Let us join together now in our call to worship, which comes from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord. God's love endures forever. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Thou art the King of Israel, thou David's royal son, who in the Lord's name comes, the King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The people of the Hebrews with palm songs before they went are praise and praise and anthems before thee we present. All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. To thee before thy passion they sang their hymns of praise. To thee now high exalted on melody we raise. O glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Thou didst us accept their praises, accept their prayers we bring. Who in all good delight hast thou good and gracious King. Hear now our call to confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
In penitence and faith, let us confess our sins to God. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Holy God, sure of your faithfulness even in your dying, comforted by your compassion toward your people in every age, we beg your mercy for our imperfect gratitude. We have looked to you for selfish favors when you have given us everything. We have withheld from your people our neighbors, and from your creation, our earth, the care and tending they deserve. We have rejected the cornerstone you sent to build a people of righteousness even here today. Forgive our failings, heal what we have broken, and nurture what we have neglected. Help us to change and lead us to your vision so that we may know the peace of wholeness in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us continue to confess our sins in silence. Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. To our Facebook friends, I want to apologize that I wasn't bellied up to the mic, So, but I do want to... Uh, uh, repeat again, sorry for our parking lot folks, but I want you all who are online to hear and know that our soloist is Will Borland. He is a blessing. Will, we're thankful that you are with us. And our pastor preaching today is Reverend uh, Kelly Spencer. She's a Lake Fellow in parish ministry, and we are thankful that she will be bringing God's good word to us today. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Let your word, O God, break open our hearts this day through the power of the Holy Spirit that we may enter into the coming Holy Week with the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Amen. Friends, it's a blessing to be here with all of you today. I invite you to hear these words from the psalm. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. This may not have been the scripture passage that you expected for this morning. 
Uh, Mark 11 is being read in churches all across the world today. But there is something in particular that drew me to Psalm 31, this particular Palm and Passion Sunday. Because I have to tell you, I struggled with the tension of Palm Sunday this year. I mean, every year it's a challenge to choose between the joy and exuberance of Palm Sunday versus the sobriety and violence of Passion Sunday. Yet, as I sat with the texts, it felt strangely applicable to this continued strange tension and grief as we start our second year of this global pandemic. There have been so many lives lost, so many celebrations canceled, such pain from fear, anxiety, and loneliness. And at the same time, I feel as if all of us have had some joys and successes in the last year. Victories that we've perhaps struggled to name amidst the all-encompassing loss around us. So I found myself yearning for a psalm this Palm Sunday. Something divinely inspired that may have more space for the different emotions that we all carry with us to worship today. And I think Psalm 31 does just that. Psalm 31 is located in the first part of our Psalter, known as Book 1 of the collection of Davidic Psalms, and is classified as an individual lament, in which an individual cries out to God in the midst of a perilous, even life-threatening situation. A classic lament includes a complaint, words of trust, and a request. So we find in our psalm for today words of complaint and lament. I'm sure you heard those. They're rather extreme. And in verses 9 and 10, the psalm psalm singer cries out to God about the oppression that has caused a wasting of her eye, her soul, her body, her bones, and indeed her very strength. In these words, we feel and see the physical devastation that comes with unrelenting distress and oppression. An interesting phenomenon of the laments in the book of Psalms is that oppressors and adversaries are rarely named. Rather, they are nameless, faceless others. The timeless every person that's depicted in oppressions that humanity have encountered and will encounter for all of time. Thereby allowing readers and hearers to place themselves in the midst of the psalm's story. I find this important in this particular season that we can place ourselves in the psalm whether at the beginning or at the end, whatever we're bringing with us to worship today. But the good news is that utter despair does not have the final say in this selection of the psalm, or for Psalm 31 as a whole. After the expression of lament, we get words of trust, words of petition, The psalm singer mingles these words of trust in God to care for her in the midst of the situation in which she finds herself. And words of petition to the God she is confident can deliver her. So she declares in verse 14, You are my God. And in verse 15, my times are in your hands. She petitions, deliver me from the hands of my enemies and let your face shine upon your servant. The very end of the psalm says, love the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful. So in short, Psalm 31 is a prayer that teaches us about trusting God, 
both in dying and in living. So as we celebrate this Palm Sunday in which Jesus is triumphantly coming in the back door of the kingdom, we can hold space for those who were excited and threw their palm branches down proclaiming Hosanna. And we can also hold space for those of us who were less certain of this journey and what it might mean for them. This past week, I had a good friend from seminary who posted a Facebook status that said, Am I the only one struggling to write a conclusion for my Palm Sunday sermon? The last time I checked it, there were 112 different comments from friends across the world who said, Me too. But then it hit me. Psalm 31 is a prayer that teaches us to trust in God. So as I prayed with my best friend on my way here this morning from Indianapolis, I was grateful for the space that he held with me to feel all the things that we're feeling before you preach on a Sunday morning. Recognizing that God holds that space and so much more for each and every one of us. So that is what I hope for this Palm Sunday, this Passion Sunday, the beginning of our Holy Week. That we might find space for ourselves and for one another. The journey we go on in this holiest of weeks tells the story of a God who doesn't hold back, even in death. Because God wants to leave space for you no matter where you are. When you're feeling alone, cry out to God. When you're feeling excited, rejoice with God. When you're feeling uncertain, pray to God. No matter what, we have this opportunity to connect with the divine Because of God's steadfast love for each and every one of us. And these truths are modeled for us in the book of Psalms. The journey from Palm Sunday to the Passion reminds us of the pain. Emotional, spiritual, and physical. That God desires to take from us and hold for us. Palm Sunday wakes us up to know and understand who truly saves us, a crucified Christ. And because of that, we trust and know that absolutely nothing can separate us from the great love of God. So the shouts of Hosanna's will soon turn to shouts of crucify him. The palm branches will soon turn to the cross. And as we wade through all this week might bring us, I invite you to know that the God of love holds space for you. Amen. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the joyful, the painful, the costly, the beautiful salvation that we have thanks to your crucified and rising love for us. We are thankful, O God, that all of human emotion that you welcome and that we may turn to you and we may find in you both understanding and grace. Lord, on this day we ask your grace for the communities of Boulder and Atlanta and Virginia Beach. We pray for the victims and their families. We pray for the perpetrators, and we pray for our nation. We continue to pray for the Western Boone school community as they grieve the death of one of their students. We pray for our friend, the Weibo superintendent, Rob Ramey. We ask you to pour out your grace on the Crawfordsville High School community as they grieve for a beloved teacher, Drew Neal. Lord, we pray as well for all who are in in need of healing. 
we ask you to bless all who are ill with the coronavirus, for you to be with those who are quarantining. Pour out your grace, we pray, on Deb. Be with uh, Noreen. Bless Noreen's friend, Patricia. Bless Debbie and help her to recover. Bless Becky and Jim. Help Becky's lungs continue to recover and to grow in their capacity. We pray for Susan's friend, Jan. We ask your grace for Roger, that you would help him to remain cancer-free and COVID-free. Bless Bill and Linda. Be with Jim. We're thankful that the accident he was in was not more severe. We pray for his continued healing. Bless Peg. Be with Barb and help her vision to return fully. We ask, O oh God, your grace for all who grieve, including Nancy, Mandy, Kyle, and Brittany, Jim, and Rob. For the family of Helen, Dick, Arlene, David, and Bob. For the family of Paul and of Betty. We ask your grace upon Don and Dottie, and we pray your grace and your healing love for Stephanie, Carrie, and Marty. We pray for those who are in transition, asking your grace for Kevin and Laura. Be with Susan's mother, Patricia. Bless all students and teachers and school workers. Continue to guide, bless, and protect Hillary's grandfather, Lloyd. And Lord, we ask your grace for all who serve to protect us during this pandemic. Be with all frontline health care and essential workers. Continue, O oh Lord, to help us all do what we can to take the steps to stem the spread of COVID-19. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for the continued uh, vaccinations and the continued good news that we are beginning to emerge from this very difficult time. O oh God, we have so many needs. We don't know what to do with them. Help us, O oh Lord, to bring them to you. Help us to trust your mercy and your grace. Help us to turn our anxieties and worries over to you as these are silent prayers. O oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Ride on, ride on in majesty, our call the tribes of Hosanna cry. Thy humble beast pursues its road with palms and scattered garments strode. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly Up right on to thy, O Christ, thy triumphs now begin, O'er captive death and conquered sin. Right on, right on in majesty, The hosts of angels in the sky Look down with sad and wondering eyes, to see the approaching sacrifice. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to thy, bow thy meek head to mortal pain, then take, O God, thy power and reign. Friends, as we go from this place, I invite you to go home and read Mark 11, 1 through 11, to rejoice alongside those who believe in Jesus Christ. 
and read verse 11 that tells us after Jesus came to Jerusalem and entered into the temple, he snuck away with time with his friends. May we do so also as we go into another week, navigating a broken world, bringing redemption from the God of love. As you go from this place, may you know that Christ goes before you to plan and prepare your way. The Holy Spirit walks beside you as friend and companion for the journey. And the God of love is above you, calling and reconciling your life now and forevermore. Amen.